What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Piopoli Phenom. This is another huge resin 3D printer and I'm really excited about this one. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my initial impressions on this large, phenomenal printer. Let's check it out. All right, so in this video, again, we're gonna be taking a look at the Piopoli Phenom. And this is, again, my initial impressions of this machine. I've been working with it for about a week now. And yeah, so far it's really, really good. Just cut, cutting right into it here. But this is not an official review. And again, this is an early unit of this machine. I believe there are only three of these floating out in the wild myself. I have one, Joel Telling, who I believe also just published a video specifically on this printer today, which is very cool. So go check that out if you haven't watched that, but finish watching this one first. And Chris over at Practical Printing has one of these as well. But today we're talking about the Phenom. So this is another really large resin 3D printer. This is the second large format resin 3D printer that I'm taking a look at. The first one that I was looking at was the Frozen Transform. In this video, I'm not gonna be really comparing the two. I'll be doing that at some point here soon. But what I really wanna do is just really zero in and focus on the specs and the prints that I was able to get out of this machine. So the Phenom, as you can see, is a really large resin 3D printer. It's made by the folks over at Piopoli who are best known for their Moai resin 3D printer. And what's really different about this machine versus their Moai is the Moai was all run off of lasers, whereas this is an LED slash LCD display build process that's involved with this printer. The technology behind this, I don't fully know. I'm sure Joel will be going into that in detail. <laughs> I'm not the technical guy. I'm the fun printing guy that just likes fun printing helmets and replica props and showing off cool stuff. But I'm really excited about another really large resin 3D printer. So let's talk about that build volume. So the build volume for the Phenom is 276 millimeters by 155 millimeters by 400 millimeters, or in inches that translates to about 10.9 inches by 6.1 inches by 15.7 inches. And again, I'm gonna try my best not to compare this to the Transform, which I've previously looked at, but the Phenom does have a slightly smaller build volume than the Transform, but not by much. This is an all metal design, lots of fans built into this thing, and it's really loud fans. This early units, they're really, really loud. And one of the initial call outs that we've been making to Piopoli is that, man, I hope there's something that you can do with these fans. And I believe they're already working on making it so that these fans, before they're officially rolled out to everybody, are a lot more quiet than they are on these early units. But it's really, really loud. And what I like to equate it to is sort of like my old Xbox 360 when it was going through Red Ring of Death and uh, yeah, yeah, basically overheating. I mean, this isn't overheating, but it's just the fans. There's, I think, one, two, three, I think there's four of them. I'm not entirely sure, but they're big and they're loud and it helps keep everything nice and cool on the inside. All right, here's a quick video just so you can hear how loud the actual machine is. I, I don't know if it's gonna be any harder to hear me over this or not. So the other important factor that I'm sure a lot of you are wondering is what's the price point on this? The price point is at $1,800. And again, that's at the same price point as the Transform. And it's sort of, again, along the lines of where I was expecting these early large format resin printers to be priced at somewhere around 2000 or less. And I've, so far, I'm again, I'm getting really great results and I'm really excited to be showing these to you guys. But before I jump into that, I did wanna also mention here, this does have a, a door open design here where you're able to sl uh, slide, you're able to open the door open. It's got this acrylic panel in here that's gonna protect it from the UV light as you're printing in here. 
And it's this, again, all metal design, a metal vat and a metal build plate up top that's not perforated. This is just a solid build plate. So I just want to show you an example of what the build plate looks like. Mine's a little beat up already from removing prints from this. And yeah, it's not perforated like the Transform either. Uh, one thing that I've mentioned to the guys there at Piopoli that I find just a little bit odd is holding this by the metal end piece. So I'm assuming here, maybe at some point, maybe not this initial run that they're gonna start with, but maybe at some point they'll change the design slightly of this where it's just a little bit easier. Maybe there's handles on this or something to make it a little bit easier to get in and out of the machine. I mean, it's not overly difficult. It's just not ergonomically, I think that's the word I'm looking for, <laughs> comfortable in your hand to hold. And maybe this is a great opportunity for someone in the community that's great at design and ends up having one of these machines to run off and design something that is able to still be able to put it in here in the, the actual printer itself and hold it in place, but give you some way to actually grip this and hold it. Uh, one of the other call outs that I wanted to make is that when the printer is actually in the bed, it's in the vat, since this top plate is completely flat, when it ends up lifting up, you'll get resin here pooling on the top of the build plate. So one thing that I'm doing to combat resin actually just pooling up on the top of this is after the build plate is printing in the machine and actually lifts up out of the resin a little bit, I'm able to actually just use a spatula and gently push all of the excess resin off of the top of the build plate back into the vat. This makes it a lot easier to clean off the actual build plate now rather than later on in the process when it actually takes time to remove this and you get it full of prints and all that other fun stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just two super minor things about working with this. And again, those might change in the future, but for right now, it's probably gonna end up shipping just like this, which again, it works just fine. I've gotten a whole bunch of great prints off of this thing. All right, let's talk about the touch screen on this unit. Yeah, the interface is super, super easy to work with, which is absolutely great. Uh, yeah, it's it's really simple to navigate around. Touchscreen's very responsive. Uh, if you want to level a build plate, there's a level function. If you want to move it up, you can move it up. And when you go through the process of moving the build plate at any point in time or in any one of these functions, if you want to cancel the process, you can hit the back button or hit the stop button. And it works really well. They've done a great job with this. Uh, there is no Wi-Fi support, so more than likely when this launches, they might have a firmware update that removes that as an option that's listed there, or at least not that I'm seeing of at all here on the machine or I've tried out. But that's currently an option here on the firmware and it just doesn't do anything, so I believe they're gonna be hiding that as a menu option here once it officially rolls out. And by the way, in terms of user documentation, this is something that they're still actively building. This is one of the reasons why they shipped it out to us for some input on some of those manuals that they're actually gonna be building and publishing once it's officially available. Some of the other really cool things is that they have profiles available directly for Chi2 box. So you still have to, as of right now, download those and import them, but they have it set up that you can easily print and work with the Ciratec Fast resin. And soon they're gonna be releasing their Deft resin that's supposed to be specifically designed and made for these larger resin 3D printers. So very excited to try that out in the near future. And the Fast resin from Ciratec is like my favorite resin to work with these days. And all of the prints that I've done so far are in this Ciratec Fast Green, which is a, one of their new color options. So very, very excited about that. These are all bottles that I picked up off of Amazon. Also, one thing that you wanna do if you intend on picking up this machine is that this actual machine does not come with any resin. So keep that in mind. So if you end up picking up the machine and you wanna start printing something, it doesn't even come with a small sample. Really, you need a full bottle here. Here, this is one 500 uh, milliliter, milliliter, grams, I can't remember how this is, a bottle of resin, and it will fill the full tank, and then uh, you're able to print with that. And I ended up going through the most part, I think, 
three or four bottles of this for all of the prints that I'll be showing you guys here in just a few minutes. Also, one additional thing that's great that this printer came with for most folks is that it is gonna come with an additional FEP sheet. So eventually at some point, you're gonna have to change that sheet out. So it's great that this machine came with an additional FEP sheet for you all. So if you need to swap things out, you're able to easily change that out. It also came with a few additional tools as well, like a little uh, rubber plastic spatula thing here to help uh, clean up prints. And then it also came with a metal spatula as well to help get prints off of the print bed. Pretty basic stuff that you'd see, I think, in most resin printers. And I think it came with gloves and one uh, filter set there. And that brings me to another really great point about this machine. They have already started listing the additional FEP sheets that you can buy online, as well as those additional display panels. The thing with resin 3D printers is at some point they have a lifespan of being able to run a certain number of prints and then their lights are gonna start burning out and you're gonna have to swap that out. I haven't actually gone through the process of swapping this out yet, but it's great to see that they already have those up and available for you to purchase and or pre-order, I should say, at this point for additional support that if you feel like you need to buy a replacement panel, that's something that's available and out there. All right, let's talk about some of these prints. So the first thing that I went off and tested was one of their calibration cube test print files which for the life of me, I cannot find now. Mine was a little bit skewed on that original test print. And then again, I went and did a second print and my print actually failed on me. And what I found out was, surprise, surprise, it's starting to get cold. It's starting to become fall and winter. And my print space is actually pretty cold, or at least it was a little bit colder earlier in the week than it was right now where it's about 60 degrees just outside. It was probably around 30s or 40s out. So I need to put back on my space heater in my print room. As soon as I did that, my prints started working flawlessly. So the first thing I did was load up the build plate with some pretty smallish size models here. Those included a Red Hood mask here. This is an eye mask from Villainous Props and it's not gonna stay on my face, but it's crazy smooth and I honestly think I could print about five of these on the build plate, which would be really, really cool to see. And I might have to do that in a separate video is just see how many of these I can load up and print. And the color of this resin is really cool. It's like a highlighter yellow kind of green. It's, it's sort of like an acrylic color and it has a really nice transparent look to it. And I also printed one of these Mimic files from Cast and Plate. This again is my go-to resin. 3D printing file, pretty much every resin printer that I've ever owned, I printed one of these on it. And again, I think the details on this just look absolutely fantastic. So after that, I ended up printing some of these really cool evil pumpkins by Arminus 3D that are available over on my mini factory. These designs are so wild. So wild, my kids are gonna freak out when they see these. I do need to go off and prime and spray paint these and get them all weathered and, and dirtied up for Halloween and potentially print these much larger, maybe on one of my FDM printers. And again, I'm not sure how much of this is gonna pick up with the resin color, and I'm gonna probably regret not actually airbrushing or putting at least a coat of primer on these. Next up is Pickle Rick. Who doesn't love Pickle Rick? And this is a resin version of Pickle Rick. I ended up printing two of these just because I had extra room on the build plate, so I figured, why not? These files are by John Cleaver, and you can download them right now over over on my mini factory as well. So I'll have links to basically all of these designers and their files down below. Make sure to check them out, make sure to give them some love, toss them some cash money, buy their files. I love supporting these guys. Please support the amazing designers out in this community. 
So I can actually see a little bit of ribbing on here, but again, I'm not sure if it's from the file <laughs> or if it's from the printer itself. So I'll try to get some of that so that you can see some of the ribbing on the side of the prints. So if you watched one of my previous videos from New York Comic Con, I talk about my Magneto cosplay and how for my Magneto helmet while I was at New York Comic Con, I bumped into something getting out of a car and I lost one of the emblems on the top or the crest on top of my helmet. So I went off and resin 3D printed that file all over again just so I could have that file that I previously broke. So this is again that file and I am again seeing, I think that is on the actual print, I'm seeing just some I don't know if it's layer lines or what, but it might have been just how I had these positioned. So I had it at a bit of an angle or maybe it's because it's sitting on this table and there might have been a slight rock to the table, but we'll see. I'm gonna try putting this thing on the ground and doing some more prints and we'll probably circle back up with you guys here after that. But again, really clean looking. This basically just needs a coating of primer and some really light sanding and I'm good to go. It's way cool. So this is another mask from Villainous Props. This looks like the Red Hood Oni mask, but it's just missing the eyepiece portions of the mask. Actually, I think this is from Mortal Kombat 11. This is maybe Sub-Zero's mask, I think is the official title for the file, but it's basically another Oni mask. And again, I think this is gonna be something I'm gonna be incorporating into my upcoming cyberpunk cosplay. So here's the mask on. Fits perfectly. Oh man, I'm so excited about this. And the color is just ridiculously cool. I almost don't wanna paint this at all. I might just have to leave it this color. And I might attempt to, on this one here, do the wet sanding and clear coating and buffing, just so I can see if I can make this really crystal clear. Again, so if I look really closely, I've got some really faint layer lines, but honestly, it's with <laughs> one passing of like a thousand grit or 800 grit sandpaper, it's gonna completely wear that down. I'm pretty excited about this. All right, and finally, let me show you this massive mask. This was a 25 hour print that I ran all in one piece here. Lots of supports were needed for this, all hollowed out as well. This is the Mask of the Warrior, and it's by the amazing designer, Trajan, over on My Mini Factory, who's over on Twitter. You definitely need to be following this guy. His models that he makes are these really trippy, sci-fi, ancient-looking files that are just really, really twisted. But this is, I believe, his first mask that he's made, and it just came out ridiculously cool. This just looks stunning. The level of details in this file really help highlight the fact that even with the little bit of layer lines that I'm seeing here in some of these prints that like on this Oni mask that I would need to wet sand out, on this there's literally nothing that I'm going to do other than throw down some primer and start painting this. This is a game changer for me. This is going to help drastically reduce the amount of sanding and post-processing that I have to go through. Even including the fact that I had to remove all the sports, I had to go clean this, I'm using big huge buckets full of mean green and water and then I have to UV cure it. Still, even that is still pales in comparison to the amount of time that I would typically spend sanding and filing and trying to get into these little nooks and crannies if I was being really overly anal retentive, which sometimes I can get over some of these builds. But man, the details on this is just insane. Again, it's one of these things that now I'm kind of torn that I don't, almost don't wanna paint these because of the color and the transparency of it. it just looks really, really friggin' cool. And I'm not sure if my camera is gonna be able to stay locked onto this, but we'll try it here. I think I scaled this just a little bit too small. So what's crazy is I still haven't even actually printed something that's the full build volume of the printer. I'll be working on that here over the next week or so. And again, I will be at some point here doing a direct comparison between the Phenom and the Transform, but really wasn't intending for that to be this video whatsoever. I just really wanted to give you guys my initial thoughts on this printer and they basically are, man, I'm very, very impressed with this. The only drawbacks that I see about the printer right now are that the fans are really loud. 
again, for me, that's not really an issue. I have a dedicated printing room that I have other machines running in, and it's probably the same amount of loudness as if I have two CR-10s running at the same time. <laughs> so it's nothing outrageous by any means. So and it's not like I can hear it directly from the other room or from upstairs or it's bothering anything like that. Uh, but again, if you are printing with resin materials, make sure to use precautions. There's lots of videos. I've made a video on this. Just make sure you're aware you need gloves and wear some eye protective gear. Make sure you have well ventilated rooms, etc. You don't want to get sick or have any major medical issues over something that you're 3D printing for fun. I also want to point out on the right side of the machine is where you'll find a USB port. There's an ethernet port here as well. So maybe that at some point here, there will be internet connectivity to the machine. I haven't really tested it out yet. And I didn't believe that was something that they had mentioned that was available just yet. So I didn't really try that out uh, as well as the on off switch and a power plug entry here. So it's, pretty straightforward and easy to access, which is nice. It's not all the way on the backside of this huge, heavy machine as well. So again, if you're interested in the Piopoli Phenom, I'll have links down below to where you can check that out over at Matter Hackers or directly at Piopoli. Again, really digging this machine. You will for sure be seeing me printing more on this. And in fact, I'll more than likely be throwing down a full size helmet on this very, very soon. All right, I just wanna say thanks again for watching, you guys. If you have questions about this machine, hit me up down below. I'll be glad to help and try and answer any of these as much as I can. Make sure to check out Joel's video. I'm sure Chris over at Practical Printing will also be posting some more videos here on the Phenom as well. So again, I'll have links down below to their channels. So make sure to give them some love and say hi from your good old Uncle Jesse.